for your goodness toward us. We thank you, O oh God, that you have brought us to this place at this present time. And now, Lord, we pray that you would open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears, O oh God, that we might be able to, to hear and receive what you have to say to us today. Father, we do thank you. We praise you. We love, honor, and adore you, O oh God. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. Lord God, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. And we thank you for this present moment. In Jesus' name, amen. We are continuing our sermon series called Jesus Says, and so where we began last week and during this Lenten season to look at some of the things that Jesus directly taught during his three years of public ministry. And so uh, I don't know what kind of Bible you have at home, but in some Bibles, in, in the Gospels, uh, his words will be written in red, and not, not in all uh, Bibles, but in some of them. And so I had uh, decided that I was going to, I thought I was going to be doing this from the book of Luke. And uh, last Sunday it didn't work out that way. I was in the book of John. And so now this Sunday it didn't work out that way. I'm in the book of Matthew. And so next Sunday maybe I may get to the book of Luke. I'm not sure. But anyway, wherever the Lord takes us, that's where we, uh, that's, that's where I end up. And so this morning uh, the title of this message is Integrity Matters. So I think that it is pretty safe to say that we live by a system of rules in the world. From an early age, we learned and we taught our children rules of conduct. And I think all of us uh, pretty much did that and do that. In almost any classroom or even work setting, there are rules of conduct that are established. In fact, if you know, we have not had kids in the school system for a, uh, a long time, my husband and I, uh, but I can remember seeing signs posted on the walls of elementary classrooms that said things like, no hitting, be kind, play safely, help each other, work quietly, listen when others are talking, raise your hand when you want to speak, tell the truth, and things such as that. Now, most of us not only learn these things in school, but we also learn them at home as well. So that hopefully by the time we made it to high school or to the workplace, we no longer need signs posted for us to know how to show respect for each other or to be truthful. But how sad would it be as adults if we had to post on our walls at work the rules of conduct? Things like only take 30 minutes for lunch, come to work on time, or speak to the boss when you see them in the morning don't use company time for excessive personal business. You get the point of what, I, what I'm meaning, is that at a certain point in our lives, we should have some personal integrity. We should have some things already etched in our hearts uh, because these things are expected no matter uh, where we go. In all aspects of life, there are rules. So it really should not be any surprise when we commit our lives as followers of Jesus Christ and make him Lord of our lives, that we must learn and abide by the rules of the kingdom of God. But yet people will say, I don't want to go to church. They have too many rules. But if you drove here even today, you obeyed the rules of the road because rules are a way of life. In many cases, they eliminate chaos. So in our text for today, Jesus is not just concerned that we keep rules, but that we understand their purpose. So one of the passages for today is from the book of Exodus, which you might think of as like being in elementary school, where God was showing the people who he brought out of Egypt how to live as the people of God in a society with other people, but also he was teaching them how to live in ways that would please him. You see, they had no clue what was expected of them. This is why God gave them the Ten Commandments. He gave them to Moses while at the top of Mount Sinai. And he told Moses this is what he was supposed to teach the people. So when God brought them out of the land of Egypt, they did not know how to be his people, so he taught them. God told Moses to write these things down on a tablet, and he said, wherever you go, you ought to carry these rules or commandments with you so that they could be obeyed. 
One of the commandments, in fact, we're going to talk about today, it's, it's the, the third commandment in Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. It says, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. This is also repeated again in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 12. Do not swear falsely by my name and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Oftentimes, whenever Jesus taught the disciples or large crowds that included the Pharisees, he referred back to something that they could relate to. So here we are in chapter 5 of Matthew, which is known as the Sermon on the Mount or the Beatitudes. And Jesus is beginning to teach them with a similar mindset about things that they should have learned long ago, and now it should be clear to them. But what he's finding is that it's not clear to them because they are abusing uh, the rules that were intended to help them to grow and to become people of integrity. And so he found that they did not understand the purpose of them. And so whenever we don't understand the purpose of something, it can lead to abuse or misuse. Jesus was now expecting them to have graduated from elementary school and now able to live by the commandments, not because they were written on tablets, but because by now they should have been written on their mind and in their hearts. But rather what he found was that they were abusing and misusing the commandments in such a way that he had to address it. So he said in Matthew 5, beginning at verse 33, again you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. Jesus knew that they were familiar with the Ten Commandments, as I mentioned earlier, so he started with what they knew. He said, you've heard that you should not use the Lord's name to make a promise unless you're going to keep it. In Jesus' day, like it is today, what they were doing was making flippant promises and using the Lord's name to give themselves more credibility. They were doing this so much and not keeping the promise that it got to the point that no one ever even took them serious anymore and truth was at an all-time low. They would make promises to make a good impression and swear by God's name knowing full well that they had no intention of fulfilling the promise. One of the things, though, I love about Jesus and the word of God is that, it's, that it, is not on, it not only was applicable then, but it is also applicable now as well. What Jesus was saying to them is when you swear that you are telling the truth, should we believe you because you said, I swear? And if you don't swear that you are telling the truth, then is it okay? to lie is what Jesus was saying. Jesus said, no, you should not have to say things like I swear to God for someone to believe you. Because if you do, then that means you have an integrity problem. In Matthew chapter five, verse 37, that's why he said, but let your yes be yes and your no, no. He said, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. What Jesus is teaching us is that integrity matters. And I've read a lot of definitions about uh, as to what integrity means, like some of these dictionary definitions. It means the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness, the state of being whole and undivided. But my own definition is when we live out or attempt to live out the values of the kingdom of God with truthfulness and honesty being at the top of this list, we can be trusted. And being able to be trusted is crucial when others can depend upon our word. If we tell them something, if we say that we're going to do something, then we do it. Even down to paying our bills, if we say that we are going 
to pay a bill or we sign a contract or we charge something on a card and we get a bill, then our integrity is on the line and we want to do what we said we were going to do. Jesus is also saying that we should not exaggerate or embellish our um, statements with half truths to have people think more highly of us. To have integrity does not mean that we are perfect, but it certainly means that we can make a promise and with the intention of keeping it. And we don't wanna make illegitimate excuses for not doing it. Jesus was saying in essence that when you are a person of integrity and you say no, that people understand no. And when you say yes, they understand yes. You don't have to swear to God. So Jesus' point in prohibiting oaths was to make it clear that one should tell the truth, not sometimes, but all the time, and keep one's promises. This is what Jesus is saying should be the mark of a person who calls themselves a Christian or a follower of God. Jesus is telling us that integrity matters and was telling the crowd the same thing. By now, you should have enough integrity where you should not have to say such things or make yourself look more credible than you are. For whenever a person swears, he says, he or she is saying in essence, in effect, that I have lied on other occasions, but in this instance, I swear I'm telling the truth. You should be able to just make a promise and have people believe you based upon your character. He is saying, that all that we really have is our own name. A good name, the proverb says, is better than gold or silver. So he says, if you swear by heaven, heaven does not belong to you, so that gives you no credibility. If you swear by earth, that does not belong to you either, so still, you don't get any credibility. If you swear by Jerusalem, neither that. And he says, even if you swear by your own hair, that still does not give, give you any credibility because you cannot make one hair darker or lighter. Well, you can with dye, but he's not talking about that. He's talking about the fact that you cannot do it naturally. Amen? So even if you say, I cross my heart and hope to die, you don't have control even over your own death. So what you have control over is your own integrity and your name, that is, this is what matters. So that's why in verse 37 he says, when you make a promise, let your yes be yes, and let your no be no. He says, anything beyond that comes from the evil one. Now get this, remember that Jesus taught in the prayer that he taught his disciples that they were to pray for deliverance from the evil one. So now he is saying to them, you don't want to pray for deliverance from the evil one and then turn around and do something that is directly from the evil one. And he said spit, swearing is that kind of thing. And so I can remember uh, when I was growing up, and you might remember this as well, and whenever I would say and I was trying to, you know, I would tell my mom something and I was trying to make sure that I got my point across and I'd say to her, I swear to God, and, 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 with the, and almost I would have to get out of the way in order not to get the backhand or in order not for her to say to me, I got to wash out your mouth or uh, threaten to wash out my mouth. But I never understood why she was so adamant about saying these kinds of things. But of course, she understood even then that I was not telling the truth. And if I had been telling the truth, I wouldn't have had to, to say all of these things. And if I hadn't lied before to her, then I wouldn't have had to add all these things. You know how it is when you are talking to people and they have to add all of these different words about, you know, to get you to believe them. Jesus is saying to us, don't, don't do that because it does not give you uh, any more credibility and it gives the implication that if you have to do this now, then everything else that you said was not the truth. And so we should not, what Jesus is teaching us, is that we should not just be truthful when we are under oath. We should be truthful all the time. And telling the truth is the basis of community. 
lies and falsehoods tear a community apart. And so this is what Jesus meant by using the Lord's name in vain. If we have to prove something by using the Lord's name, then there is something wrong with our own integrity, is what Jesus is saying. Your word should be good enough. Or if you have to go and get the Bible and put your hand on it to get people to believe you, there is something wrong with that. So what Jesus is teaching us, not only the Pharisees, is that your word should be good. It was to teach them right from wrong, but ultimately it was to bring them to a place where they practiced right from wrong, where right and wrong was etched in their hearts because they had integrity. I wonder what integrity would look like on social media. When we are out on social media and you see people, uh, you can't even trust anything uh, that's out there. I wonder what uh, integrity would look like out there if all of us practice our personal integrity. And so I want to be clear today, though, that Jesus is talking about taking oaths and swearing by his name in our everyday conversations. He is not talking about and saying to us that we can never take oaths in a courtroom or when we vow to be faithful in our marriages or we vow to raise our children as Christians in baptism. However, it should give us pause to know that when we do say and do things in God's name, even if we are doing it truthfully, we have the obligation to be truthful and faithful to what we have vowed or taken an oath to do. And so I know that others took oaths in, in the Bible, so I know that Jesus was not talking about this, but he was addressing the everyday flippant lack of integrity and lying and shading of the truth that we do. And you may not think about this, but sometimes even uh, we may not consider it shading the truth or lying, uh, so to speak, but you know how we even make excuses for not doing things. I was recalling as I was working on this sermon, I was recalling that a couple of weeks ago I had a meeting and I said this to you all before that some of these uh, clergy meetings that I go to, I, they just make me, I, I don't really like going. And so there was one that I uh, was, had committed to go to and when uh, the day came around, I, I, got a, uh, I got a text message saying a reminder and so immediately I responded back to the text message saying, uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to come. And I was thinking uh, in my head, you know, what kind of an excuse can I come up with not to be able to go uh, to this meeting? Now, this was on a Tuesday, and the meeting was going to be on Thursday. And so I was, I was thinking, 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 what in the world uh, can, I, can I say to get out of going uh, to this meeting, and, uh, and, 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 and I was working on these Jesus sayings, right? And so I, I had to just come to terms with the fact that I had made a commitment. I had no real reason not to go to the meeting, except I didn't want to go. So in this instance, what Jesus would say to me is then just say, no, I'm not coming to the meeting. But don't say, I'm not coming to the meeting because I have a doctor's appointment. Or I'm not coming to the meeting because I'm sick. Or I'm not coming to the meeting because I have a headache. Because none of that was true. I went to the meeting. It's the point. But I was tempted. I was tempted to make up some kind of thing because I didn't want to go. But I heard the words of Jesus say, let your yes be yes and your no be no. So we don't have to make up excuses because if people know the kind of people we are, if we say that we cannot make something or we cannot do something, then they know that. And so does integrity matter? It does. Uh, Barna Research tells us that we live in a post-truth society where people think nothing of lying each and every day. And so we don't want that to be our reality as people of God. Listen to, to Jeremiah 31, 33, the covenant that God said he would make. 
He says, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. We are living in the days of the new covenant that was promised. The new covenant was to graduate us from elementary school living, where instead of obeying the rules that are written on charts, to obeying the law of God that should be in our minds and written on our hearts so that we live lives that are truthful. Integrity matters because we want to be trusted. We want our words to match our actions. Integrity matters because truth and honesty still matter. Integrity matters because our relationship with Christ matters. And we are not just concerned about our outward appearance, but we are concerned about what Christ thinks about us. There is a term called cultural Christianity, and it focuses on passages about loving everyone and a caring God and ignoring passages about sin, death, and repentance. And that was one of the reasons that I wanted to look at the things that Jesus said because he focused on repentance. He focused on us asking forgiveness for our sins. And I believe in this season of Lent that these words of Jesus call each one of us to look inward rather than outward, not looking at what somebody else is doing, but looking inward at our own lives and repenting where we need to. It is there that we will come to the root of what it means to live as a follower of Jesus in the kingdom of God. As we live with integrity, we will obey the rules, the standards of the kingdom of God, and we will live in truth. People will know who we are when we show them who we are. And that is the essence of integrity and why it matters. I thank God that Jesus said that he would die for our sins and he did not back out when times got tough. And so that's a lesson to you and I that integrity matters and if we give someone our word, then we should do everything in our power to try to keep it. Amen? Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, O oh God, for your goodness. We thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to be here this day. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us and instructing us in righteousness. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for calling us to be people of truth. And Lord, whenever you bring it to our remembrance, O oh God, that we have not told the truth, then we need to repent and ask you to forgive us and turn around and go toward you. Lord, we do thank you. We praise you. We love you, O oh God. And I pray that whenever we do take oaths, Lord, wherever we are, that we would take them seriously and we would keep those promises as well. And we would keep the promises that we make even our, in our everyday conversations. Lord, I pray today if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that does not know you in the pardon of their sins, that they would ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into their hearts and live on the inside of them so that your law would be in their minds and written on their hearts. We thank you, O oh God, and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.